My name is Toby. I'm co-founder of Mojo Diagnostics. And I'm going to tell you how we are reimagining male fertility care. Since the 1970s, male fertility has been dropping sharply. And we are approaching a level where it's going to be more and more difficult to conceive naturally. As a result, more and more couples are seeking help in fertility clinics. And the number of sperm analyses performed in these clinics has increased by 500% over the past years. The problem is that this process of analysis is a manual process that takes around 30 minutes per analysis. It's tedious and it's cost inefficient. And above all, it's unreliable. Because in the end, it's a human performing the analysis. This is why our mission starts with making sperm analysis for fertility clinics affordable and efficient. We are doing this through automation, so we are automating the entire sperm analysis process in the laboratory with the help of computer vision. The neat side effect is that we are building the world's largest data pool on male reproductive health. So far, we clinically validated our prototype beginning of the year, signed a letter of intent with a big pharma company for global commercialization of the product, just finished our second clinical trial in the south of Sweden, and uh, signed agreements with fertility clinics in London to purchase our product once it rolls off the production line. But helping fertility clinics to become more efficient and effective is a noble business. We, however, want to have the biggest possible impact. And this is why we are making male fertility care accessible for men worldwide. If you think that infertility is primarily a female problem, I have to tell you that you are, that you are terribly wrong. Infertility is evenly distributed among men and women, whereas fertility care is primarily accessible for women, at least in the Western world. Who hasn't heard about great companies such as Flow, Natural Cycles, or Clue? But what about men? What kind of fertility services are available for us? And this is why we are building Mojo, which is a subscription-based model which allows you to test your fertility once a year and freeze your sperm, thus preserve your fertility for when you're ready to have kids. And the advanced package includes insights around how to improve your fertility and how to best conceive when you're ready. There are some, excuse me, there are some 900 million men worldwide between the age of 20 and 34. And we believe that we th should think about fertility care the same way we think about vaccination. And just capturing a fraction of this market creates an opportunity similar to Dollar Shave Club and others. So together with our medical advisors, our team combines medical, tech, business, and design know-how. And we previously worked at companies such as Sony, Samsung, and Rush Diagnostics. And we are currently raising our two million seed round. And if you would like to embark on this journey together with us, please come and find me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you've got two different models going. You have a B2B model, so you're going for the clinics, and you've got a B2C model, so you're going to, in theory, acquire users for yourself. How do you think about running both of those in parallel? Which one would take precedence? Where do you start? Mm. And kind of how do you structure your team in order to do both? Yeah, it's an excellent question. And the thing is, if you really want to change the way we analyze and look at male fertility and actually do a proper job, you need to start on the clinical side. We could just build, um, I don't know, a model where we connect uh, patients with clinics. But in the clinics, they still, do the, the, they still analyze sperm in the same way. So we first fix that problem, and we have an excellent team to do so. But as I said, we want to, um, we want to do more. And for that, uh, part of the fundraising goes into extending our team for B2C, consumer marketing, uh, messaging, etc. Because we know this is where we eventually need to build up our team. Did, did you test this, the, the B2C side of it? Have you got any, any people on the subscription? It's, it sounds a little bit strange model to me if you do something once a year, paying monthly, or the, the subscription model. OK, so maybe I didn't point that out clearly. You pay monthly for the freezing aspect. OK, OK. Right. And um, on the B2B side, so is it faster and cheaper than existing? It's faster, cheaper, and most importantly, more accurate. So if, an embryo if two embryologists look at your sample today, then they get two different results. Whereas when you do it with a machine, um, you get the same result over and over again. It's reproducible. Do you become a competitor to the labs you sold to in the first place? 
so that depends. Um, if you talk to a VC, yes. If you talk to a clinic, no. Uh, because, because what does the clinic say? So the clinic, for the clinic, we solve a very clear problem, right? It's uh, uh, that we automate this, this process. Where we are five years down the road, I can't tell you now. But one scenario is that we are, in fact, uh, replacing the work, or uh, not entirely replacing, but we take over a lot of work that an embryology does. But an embryologist also does a lot of patient engaging activities, so these won't be replaced by us. Thank you.